if we start, I will try to, to speak. Uh, hi. Well, I, will, I put a title, but it's not exactly the title of the talk. I will show today, the, the, uh, the title is Drug Interaction with Lip uh, Lipid Membranes. Um, I work at the University of Buenos Aires in the um, um, pharmacological department. Um, uh, then we are interested in drug drugs, uh, and in particular we are interested in drug delivery systems. Why drug delivery systems? Because we know that uh, go develop and uh, put in the market a new drug is a long, long way that take at least 10 years or more. Then we are looking to improve the, um, the way that approved drugs could be used in a better way. Um, besides, we are also interested in drug and peta uh, peptide interactions with lipid membranes because most of the drugs should cross different barriers. In this sense, Drug delivery systems are nanotechnological systems, nanotechnological solutions that provide a biopharmaceutical, pharmacokinetical, or therapeutic benefit for a drug, like my, could be micelles, liposomes, dendrimers, or different type of structures. The idea is to solve some of the problems that drugs can have when they are, they are taken, like low solubility or permeation, low uh, stability of the drug deg or, degrad or degradation for the hepatic first step, a different uh, adverse effect, and a patient's low tolerance uh, to, uh, to the treatment. That did, uh, the idea is diminish the administration frequency or use not invasive um, ways to, to deliver the drug. But for this kind of systems, we should consider the biological barrier that the drug should cross. In this sense, what kind of biological uh, uh, barrier we should cross? Well, depend of the target of the drug, but usually biological membranes are very complicated structures that uh, form most of cell wall structures, contain a complex of, uh, of different uh, lipids and esterols and are the site of action of different proteins. But they are a very, very, very complex system. Uh, so, the lipid bilayer or the lipid membrane is um, essentially formed by the um, bilayer structure of lipids that are amphiphilic um, molecules that have hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic tails that form the lipid tails look to escape from water and uh, form order structures. But as I, I said, biological membranes are very complicated systems. Uh, so from the experimental point of view and theoretical point of view, uh, model membranes are used. They are employed as model for biological membranes. However, we can um, control the kind of lipids that do we have, the percentage of each liver, lipid, and can um, study structure, structural phase that are not uh, biological relevant, but could be important for other applications. This kind of model membranes can be characterized by several experiment techniques, and um, molecular dynamic simulation are a very powerful tool to study this kind of uh, structures um, and it's important to have a good feedback with experiments to use the, the simulations to understand experiments and to suggest different uh, experiments. Well, we use essentially classical molecular dynamics. Uh, when we can, we use atomistic models that we can uh, have a good detail of the kind of interactions that the drugs have with the membranes. 
But the problem usually is the time scales and the size of the system that we can study. So in these cases, we go to coarse-grain models get, that partially alleviate this problem, however, lost in details. We walk in the phase space like we were an elephant and don't see many of the minimas that are in the, in the way. Uh, in this sense, if we want to, to study a liposome, for example, that is a lipid structure that contains the bilayer, by atomistic simulations, we can think that we have a very big liposomes, yeah, uh, with the infinite radius, but we just take a slice of this. Then we um, study the bilayer as a plain bilayer. Uh, how, by the other hand, if we study use coarse grain model, we can reach a whole liposomes, but usually a quite small one. So we try to use both approximations to try to have a big, a real picture that will be in between both uh, approximations. So we look at the very, um, uh, the very detail with the um, uh, atomistic models, and then we try to do more cooperative or collective effects using coarse grain models. Well, this is a summary of a kind of things that we can use that I took from Irene, Irene Good thesis, uh, an adapted for most of the simulations of drug interaction with, mem with uh, membranes that we have. That we can, we, the idea is see the, how the drug interact with the membranes how the drug affects the membranes and uh, if the drug can cross the membrane. In this way, we can change uh, or vary the charge, the structural concentration of the drug, yeah, and see how they alter the partitioning and how the interactions are affected by this, looking at different properties of the um, uh, drug interaction. By the other hand, we see ha a change, uh, we can change the kind of lipids and so on, the composition and the structure, and see how the um, lipid bilayer is affected by the presence of the drug. Well, I will show an example of this kind of systems, um, that is the interaction of triptans that are anti-migraine uh, drugs that um, were developed as agonists of the serotonin receptors. This is the sumatriptan, that is the prototype of uh, the triptans family, and they were really developed as a, a drug that was already developed looking at the site of action. However, um, they, they was not as good as they expect. And why wa was not as uh, they expect, just because um, most of um, serotonin receptors are inside of the brain, and then the drug should cross the blood-brain uh, barrier to have their actions. And seems that the problem is that they they are good agonists. However, they don't reach the site of action. Then, um, in this sense, the first step that we took was a model the barrier using a POPC lipid bilayer. In this sense, we study the sumatriptan, that is this drug, this drug that uh, has a PK, PKA of 963. This means that at the physiological pH is essentially protonated most of the time, uh, most of the, um, the drugs. Well, then uh, we took two different lipid, uh, drug lipid ratios that goes from 175, that is two drugs in this case, to one to three that we call high um, concentration. We put the drugs in the water phase and we, car uh, we have done the simulations at 310 um, Kelvin degrees. Well, um, 
we look at the properties of the membrane. The first properties that we usually look is the electron density profile. That gives an idea of the order of the membrane um, in presence or in absence of the drug. Uh, here we have the in black the um, electron density profile of the lipids, of the lipid bilayer, and we see that we have a region that corresponds to the lipid heads that interact with water in blue and a, a region that is dry, that don't have water inside. These regions correspond to the hydrophilic, hydrophobic tail uh, lipids. Well, I said that we studied um, three different concentrations, yeah? And uh, I put in red the three concentrations, and we see that the drugs always partition between the um, lipid um, water interface and the water phase. They don't access to the interior of the bilayer for the three cases. And we see that the partition of the drugs increase when it uh, increase the um, amount of drugs. However, the partition in water increase, increase in present of, uh, in, uh, when it increases the drug. A very rough estimation of the partition between the water and membrane phase could be done taking into account the amount of drugs in each concentration and, um, and calculate the, the values for each of the concentrations. Yeah? And we, we can say that the partition of sumatriplan affinity or the equilibrium of the um, sumatriptan affinity equilibrium is done at lipid drug concentration of, of 1, 4. That is when the, um, the um, energy change sign uh, is zero, exactly zero. Well, but how is the behavior of the drugs inside, uh, in these regions? Well, we, we can separate in three different behaviors. Part of the, of the drugs that are in the interface, they are just uh, in the interfacial region and they seem like they are answered in the bilayer. Another, like for example, the, the red and uh, here I, I put the water in the middle and the uh, lipid tails is this region. Then this is the interface, this is the water and this is again the interface and the tails. Well, we can see that the, the red and um, black molecules are answered in the interface. Yeah? The blue molecule moves around, uh, move freely around uh, in the water phase, like this one. However, there is another kind of behavior that is some of the molecules that are in the water phase but strongly interact with uh, water. We can see, for example, in this, this uh, peak called our attention and we found this effect. Well, I see that here, this, uh, most of molecules have a combination of this behavior. Um, however, this molecule seems uncorrelated un in, um, in the interface. And which kind of interactions do they have do in this region? Well, they do, if we look more carefully, they do different uh, specific interactions, like salt bridges between the uh, phosphate group of the lipid head and the nitrogen of the lateral amino group that is the charge um, group. We calculate the radial distribution function for the different concentration and we see a, a peak, a narrow peak, first narrow peak for all the concentrations that, are, that is in the uh, around 4 Armstrong that is characteristic but for these salt bridges. Another uh, specific interaction that we found is the cation pi interaction, also looking at the radial distribution function, we took the centroid of the um, benzene ring of the indole part of the molecule and we look at the nitrogen 
of the choline group of the lipid. And we see also a, a, a narrow peak at for Armstrong, also characteristic of this interaction. The other specific interactions are essentially hydrogen bond. In particular, the amino, the um, phosphate group of the lipid, of the um, uh, oxygen of the phosphate group, interact with the hydrogen of the indole group. And this is quite strange. Wait, this is quite uh, strong. Um, they have different um, hydrogen bonds interactions that stabilize the um, the sumatriptan in the interfacial region. Okay, then uh, besides uh, sumatriptan has the ability to form hydrogen bonds with water since it bears um, donor and acceptor groups in its structure. I will not show here and I will not show here many of the other results of these systems but I can say that for example um, the area per lipid of the system was not really changed in presence of the drug and the other parameters that are properties of the lipid membrane I said that we look at the inter interactions and also at the effects on the lipid bilayer and we don't see many um, effects in the lipid structure uh, however we see a polarization of the membrane that I'm not showing here well the second step that we did was compare with another drug that was a very similar drug also from the same family that is naratriptan naratriptan was developed uh, looking for increase the lipophilicity to increase the affinity for lipids to try to cross the um, the barrier. Well, in this case, I am showing also have a PKA uh, near in 9.7. Then it's protonated and in the same conditions. Then in this case, we at one, at high concentrations we investigate the initial conditions and we put both drugs in water and both drugs in um, in the middle of the in the interior of the um, lipid bilayer this is a quite artificial condition however we look we try to look if we put the molecules there they become they are stable or they can have a mechanism to cross in some conditions so um, <coughs> when we put both drugs a uh, solid is for the um, sumatriptan and dot is for the um, nanotriptan. When we, we put both molecules in water phase, have a very similar behavior. They partition between the um, interface and the water phase, yeah? With no access to the lipid interior. However, when we put um, the drugs inside the bilayer we see that for sumatriptan they have the same be behavior they go to the interface and they partition between interface and water phase however the naratriptan if we look here we see that we have naratriptan inside the, the bilayer but also we have water inside the bilayer yeah so we said okay what is going on and we, if we look in more detail, we find that <coughs> a, a pore, this green are the naratriptan, I remove the bilayer, only keep the lipid heads to, to see better, and these grays are the water. We see that in these conditions, a um, naratriptan self-aggregate and form a pore, like structure, that allow the pass of water. This is, uh, I mean, we keep um, running, it's like 300 uh, nanoseconds uh, now and still the pore still stable. We are trying to change uh, conditions in uh, experimental uh, setups to see if we can find this kind of structure and 
what kind of, uh, what is possible to do with ki these kind of structures, but was quite surprisingly for us. Um, this behavior was not observed for sumatriptan, that from the same conditions they will go directly to the interface and um, water phase, as uh, we see in the in the uh, in this uh, slides of uh, the electron density profile. Well, well, here we learn many things. We vary more more things that I show here, which which uh, even if the protonated species is the um, this species is the more um, abundant one, we uh, study also the neutral and we change different variables, and we find that it's essentially uh, only if we put the drugs inside the bilayer they can go inside. If not, even with no net charge, they cannot enter inside the bilayer. Well, but um, then do we understand why they don't cross, or it's difficult for them to cross the blood-brain barrier? So one proposed, well, I will go uh, uh, later. Well, uh, the idea is to learn about all these simulations and go to the coarse grain model. We use a Martini 4 seal to reduce the degree of freedom and go to bigger system to understand much more and longer times to study different properties. And well, our system for a while was um, water that has in the Martini 4 seal, um, POPC that go from 134 um, atoms to 13 um, sites uh, uh, that is already well documented but and we have some uh, amino acids however we don't have the uh, sumatriptan in this way we took the, the um, uh, tryptophan that is very uh, similar to sumatriptan, the, uh, in particular is the precursor of the um, serotonin and we look at this and do an, the analogy and get a first structure of the um, coarse grain for sumatriptan that has seven uh, sites yeah? and we transfer almost directly all the um, the aromatic ring and um, have a fine tanning of the other parameters just to get the same partition that we have with um, with the atomistic model because for us the partition is a important characteristic that we want to reproduce in this way we do exactly the same calculations that uh, we did be, uh, before um, in solid is the in um, um, points is the um, the course the atomistic and in solid is the coarse grain. We see that we lost in detail. However, we we find a very similar um, distribution. Also, be partition between the um, <coughs> the interface and the water phase. 43 concentrations that we, we look at this. Well, we in particular we look at the percentage of sumatriptan in the different regions for the three concentrations and we have a quite good agreement. Then we have a coarse grain model of sumatriptan to go ahead in our simulations. In this way, uh, we try, we have the propose of um, encapsulate a sumatriptan in poloxamer micelles. A poloxamers are three block copolymers that have a hydrophil a, that are linear, have a hydrophobic a region in the middle, and are flanked by two tails of hydrophilic do two hydrophilic tails. They have they could have different uh, lengths. In particular, we work with F127 that have 100, 100 uh, hydrophilic uh, tails 
and a hydrophobic core of 65. In this way, uh, why we work with this? Because these polyxamers are thermosensitive, term thermosensitive and with temperature and concentration they can aggregate in micelles and with temperature and concentrations they can form hydrogels. In particular, we, I will not enter in detail, but we look at the core strain model for these polyxamers and we first look at the self-aggregation. We put many of these in, uh, in water phase and we see that they make form a micelle. And then we go to a um, pre-assembled micelle, we stabilize it and we see that it uh, was stable at least for 100 nanoseconds. Um, well. But then the idea was to encapsulate sumatriptan. And then we have now the, all the ingredients. We have um, the coarse grain model of uh, polyxamer, the water and the sumatriptan. Then the first step that we did was to put the pre-assembled pre micelle in water and put sumatriptan in concentration 3 to 1 through 3 uh, drugs to 1 polyxamer in water phase and see uh, the evolution. By the other hand, we put um, the drugs inside the, the micelle and see the evolution. When we look at both uh, evolutions, we see almost the same picture. We see that part of the drugs are in water, remain in the water phase, and part of the drugs are trapped in the micelle. Well, but we need to quantify this in some way. For this, we did a um, radial density profile for both um, the um, sumatriptan in, in the condition in the bilayer and out the bilayer, and we calculate in a taking into account the spherical uh, symmetry of the micelle somehow and we see uh, the radial electron density a uh, mass density sorry mass density and we see this is the one that uh, the black is the whole polyxamer that has uh, most of the interior the green is the hydrophobic, hydrophilic part the red is the hydrophobic part and we see that in both cases we find some water that inside the bilay, the micelle. The micelle is not as um, perfect as we expect. That probably happened also at the, in the experimental studies. Uh, but the drug locate essentially if we put in the, um, the drug is in, in orange. The drug, if we put in the water phase, they partition essentially, they are fine essentially uh, in the interface region between the water and the hydrophilic, hydrophilic uh, region. Yeah, but what happens when we put inside? <coughs> they have the same partition in the same region and you can super superimpose this and it's perfect. However, you have some of the drugs that are trapped inside the, um, the micelle and create a hydrophilic region that carry water and, um, and hydrophilic um, monomers inside the micelle. Well, as a summary of this part, we can say that triptans, in particular sumatriptan, love interfaces. They always go to the interface. This was confirmed by experiments that carry out RMN with um, Eneida de Paula uh, when she came to Buenos Aires, when she came to Buenos Aires, and Sachs with um, Cristiano Oliveira in uh, Nauspi. Well, the main interactions that are responsible in some, some way for these uh, interface uh, locations are salt bridge, cation, cation pi, hydrogen bonds. 
In nerotriptan, if we put in this artificial situation, we find this uh, pore formation that we are looking forward to, to see if the, it uh, remains stable and if they can uh, be done or could be used in, in some encapsulation. And to improve the action, it was proposed to encapsulate the sumatriptan in um, polyxamer micelles. And simulation showed that sumatriptan could be encapsulated in this kind of micelles. Well, this uh, triptan interaction with the lipid by, uh, membranes and polyxamer was essentially the thesis of Irene Wood uh, that was uh, present uh, one, two months ago. Um, here I didn't show, but we also studied the interaction of polyxamer, polyxamer with, um, with the lipid bilayer because one of the proposals was that um, the polyxamer could be coadjuvant to the drug to help the drug to cross the membrane. We did some calculations and we didn't find that uh, the, in presence of poloxamer, the drug can cross it. Well, another of the, um, of the subject of the lab, uh, other of the su subjects, is the thermosensitive liposomal drug delivery system that is uh, going, uh, is uh, in ongoing um, that Juan Albano for his PhD thesis. Uh, in this way, in this kind of work, we try to conjugate the, um, the poloxamers to liposomes to use the thermosensibility to have a um, explosive liberation of drugs, for example, cancer, anti-cancer drugs in the site of the tumor. Well, I will not talk too much about this because uh, he will <coughs> present a poster uh, other of the sub subject is the interaction of human defensin with model bacterial membranes. Uh, the defensin, uh, how much time I have? Minus, minus seven. Yeah? <laughs> no, 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 he's the right one. Uh, see, really? Ah. Minus two, no, no, exactly, because I start uh, two minutes later. Uh, well, uh, we are trying to understand uh, in the in the mark of the um, uh, probiotic food, we try to understand why uh, defensins recognize some of the light lipid bilayers of the some of the probiotics and kill it, and some of them don't. don't we want to understand if this uh, this is related with the um, membrane recognition of the. Um, of the defensin. For this, we are using coarse grain model because we need to study cooperative effects. I will not show this. Uh, well, we have different collaborators. Uh, I put some of them here. Uh, well, and thank you for your attention.